We welcome you all tonight to our uh, Friday night youth group service. We're so happy that you guys have tuned in, and uh, we just welcome you tonight. It's a beautiful evening. Uh, feels like it's week 50 of our quarantine. It's only been a couple months, but uh, I miss you guys, and I hope that we could see you soon back here together in the youth room for Friday night youth group. Uh, just one quick announcement that I want to make aware to you guys is that no decisions have been made yet about summer ministries. So we usually do VBS, we do our summer program, and then some kind of uh, mission trip. No decisions have been made definitely about any of those things, but we will let you know when decisions are made and what that's all going to look like. So just um, keep your phones on you. you know, I'll text you guys and I'll email your parents with information. We'll also post the information on our website. Please know that I'm praying for you guys always. I'm thinking about you regularly. Uh, I want you to remain devoted to the Lord. Stay in His Word. Stay in prayer. And as much as you can, guys, just stay connected with one another. We need all of that, uh, especially in this time of difficulty and uncertainty. With all that said, I'm going to hand it off to Liana, and she's going to teach a very important lesson tonight on the power of the gospel. Hey guys, welcome again to Virtual Youth Group. Um, I miss you all and I, I wish we could be in person, but again, as Pastor Mike said, um, this is what we've been doing for the past couple months and it's we've made it work. Um, so before we start our lesson, why don't we go before the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this night. Thank you that we could come together, even if it's not physically together, to, um, to talk about this topic which is central to our faith and just fundamental to um, our understanding of who you are and what the Christian life is all about. So I pray that you would um, use this time to uh, speak to the people who are listening and um, just do a work in their hearts and uh, all for your honor and glory, of course, Lord. And so we thank you again that we could be here in this way. In your name, amen. Okay, so tonight we're going to be talking about the gospel's power. And I thought this was the, Mike picked a great lesson for us to end our youth group year with. We have one week left next week as a conclusion, but this is our last real lesson. And uh, I think it's a great one for us to end with because every topic that we've talked about this year um, has had the gospel interwoven into it, as it should, because the gospel is central to the Christian faith. So your leaders, we've all been really intentional intentional about putting the gospel into every lesson, um, you know, directly or indirectly, and so this is a great way for us to kind of conclude the year by talking solely about the gospel and its power tonight. Um, I wanted to start off because I was thinking about all the times that you guys have probably heard the gospel, um, either here or elsewhere, um, and especially if you've grown up in the church, you've probably been faced with the gospel a lot, and there's a certain way that Christians talk about the gospel and I think you guys um, would be familiar, especially if you've grown up in the church, would be familiar with, with some of this um, lingo. And so we'll talk about it after we go through some of these phrases that you guys are definitely familiar with, especially if you've grown up in the church. The one is Jesus saves. That's like a pretty basic one. Um, the other one is accept Jesus into your life or accept Jesus into your heart. And the last one is just pray this prayer. Um, and so again, you guys are probably really familiar with these lines. And some of them, I was thinking about how often we hear them and how they have varying degrees of truth to them. Like the one Jesus saves is truthful. It's, a, it's an accurate statement, but it's pretty vague. And Christians often state this to people who don't know the gospel as if it's the answer. And yes, it is the answer. But for most people, this raises a lot more questions than it does answers. What is Jesus saving us from? Why does he need to save us? How does he save us? And so Christians, again, often state Jesus saves, like it's the answer, but people are left often with a lot of questions. And even if you've grown up in the church and you've heard this phrase over and over again, you've probably been faced with some of the same questions that I just raised. These other two, I think, are vague at best and dangerous at worst um, because, again, these lines are thrown out like they're the answers um, that like they sum up the gospel and the fact is that they don't um, What does it mean to accept Jesus into your life or into your heart a phrase that never appears in the Bible? What does that mean and just praying a prayer? Does it really? 
what does that entail? Um, and so I think people tend to reduce the gospel down to these like one-liners, these phrases. And the truth is that the gospel is much bigger than these cheap one-liners. Um, and we have to treat the gospel like it is bigger than those things. Um, and so while there's truth in these phrases and the gospel is a simple and clear message, we can't reduce it down to something that's not even in the Bible. So let's talk about what the gospel is, because if we're going to be talking about the power of the gospel, we have to know exactly what the gospel is. And the gospel starts with God, who created the world and everything in it, and he created man, and he created man with a specific purpose, and that's for a relationship with himself, um, for his glory, to bring him glory, and to enjoy fellowship with him. And so man is created for that purpose, and God, in all of his perfection and holiness and righteousness, wants to enjoy a relationship with those who are holy and righteous and perfect, and the fact is that we're not. The Bible tells us that we are sinful creatures. Um, it tells us that all are under sin, that no one is righteous, not one. Um, these verses are found in Romans 3, and so the Bible tells us that our condition is one which is imperfect, unholy, and completely apart from God, truthfully, because God, in all of his holiness and perfection and righteousness, cannot be in fellowship with that which is anything less, and we are. Um, and so the Bible tells us of that condition that the, the wages of sin, the payment, the just punishment for our sin condition is death. It's eternal separation from God and death. Um, so it looks a lot like this. Um, man on one side of this canyon forced by sin and God on the other side. And we have no means by which to cross that bridge, uh, cross that gap. Um, we are completely separate from God with no means to fix that relationship. And so this sounds like very bad news, but because the gospel is good news, we, of course, come to the good news of the cross. Um, and again, you guys have probably been faced with this story before, so what I'm telling you probably isn't unfamiliar. Um, Jesus, God, in his love for us and for the sake of his glory, sent Jesus to earth to die uh, the death that we deserved. He took the punishment that we deserved um, so that we wouldn't have to. And so the Bible says about this, that God sent his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh to be a sin offering, that Jesus bore our sins in his body on the cross, and that God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to become sin on our behalf. So Jesus took the punishment of sin on himself. He absorbed that cost so that we wouldn't have to. And he not only took it on himself, but he conquered it. Um, three days later, he rose from the grave and defeated death. And so this gap between God and man was bridged because Jesus took the punishment. And so we now have the opportunity to have a relationship with God through the finished work of Jesus. And so again, this is great news. This is the gospel. Um, this is an, an amazing message for everyone, except it leaves us with a decision. So the work of Jesus is done. It has been completed but it leaves us with something to do, an action to take. Um, so our decision, we see in the Bible, it says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And Romans says, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ when he freed us from the penalty for our sins, for God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. And then it says, people are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. So again, we see that the work is done by Jesus, but we must turn to him in confession of our sins, believing that Jesus took this punishment on himself, and in repentance and faith. Um, and if we do that, he is faithful and just to forgive us from our sins, to cleanse us, and to offer us uh, eternal friendship with him um, in heaven. And so this, again, is great news, but we must act on it. And so I wanted to talk a little bit more about the gospel's power, as we, as we said earlier, because um, that's what this lesson is about. And so this message of the gospel, again, is great news for everyone, and it's an incredibly powerful message. And we see that in Romans 1, it talks about the power of the gospel. So I want to talk about a few points that really emphasize 
um, the power of the gospel. So Romans 1, 2 explains that the gospel was promised beforehand. And um, the gospel message is it's so incredible because it didn't just start with the cross. This was promised from the beginning of time, from the first sin, God promised to send someone to do something about this sin problem, to make right what has been made wrong by man. And so God promised this in Genesis 3, and throughout the Old Testament, we see everything pointing toward Jesus. Another verse that sticks out is Isaiah 53, which is a prophecy of Jesus coming to suffer um, for the sins of the world. So this gospel has been promised for all of eternity. It doesn't just start at the cross and end at the cross. It began long before that, and it holds hope for us going forward. Um, so the incredible power of the gospel is that it, it transcends all of history. Um, and beyond that, we see something that we noted before. In Romans 1-4, it says um, that Jesus was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so when we're talking about the power of the gospel, we can't not mention this, that Jesus took the punishment on himself, but he also conquered that punishment. Um, in an incredible display of power. And so this holds such promise for us, especially when you think about um, how it mirrors where we were. You know, we were dead in our sins. And the thing about being dead is that you can't do anything about your, your situation. You are totally dead, completely incapable of changing your state. And yet God in all of his power has made that which was dead alive. Um, so anyone who is in Christ is a new creation. You are alive in Christ. He has done the impossible and made that which is dead alive. And even more than that, he has given us his spirit and he causes that which was dead and made alive to walk in his ways. Um, and this spirit, again, was promised long before Jesus came. And so he says in Ezekiel, in a prophecy, it says, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and be careful to obey my rules. So again, the power of the gospel is that it has promise for everyone and that that which is dead can be made alive and be transformed to be like Christ. Um, and again, what great promise for us. And this is why Paul can say in Romans 1.16 that he's not ashamed of the good news about Christ. For it's the power of God at work saving everyone who believes. Again, what great news for us, right? And so I think the only fitting thing for us to do here is think of some action points that we should take in response to this powerful message. Um, the first is, even before this, is if you have not responded to the message of the gospel, um, I ask you, if not now, then when? You know, the gospel is presented for us um, through the finished work of Christ, and we have, we have something to do about it. Plenty of people reject the message. But why would you reject the message? This is a gift that has been given to you by Christ. Um, and we, we would be uh, foolish not to accept it. And so um, if you've not responded to the gospel, if you have not looked at who you are and who God is and what he's done for you, um, I encourage you to do so. And I really hope that this lesson showed you um, the power of this message and how it can change your life. Now, if you have accepted the gospel and uh, turned to Christ for forgiveness, then remember it, walk in it. Um, this gospel is something we should hold tightly to. Um, someone once said, you don't graduate from the gospel. The gospel informs everything you do. And so remember it. The other thing that you can do is share it because we don't wanna hold this good news um, to ourselves. This is news for everyone. And so share the good news of the gospel with those around you especially if you know that they don't know this message. Um, this is a matter of living with God for eternity and, and not. And so be willing to share the gospel with those around you. The last point that I want to make is that we should live lives worthy of the gospel. Um, Paul writes this, I believe it's in Philippians, and we should. It, it's true for us today. We should do the same. Live a life that's worthy of the gospel. Um, don't entertain yourselves with the things that Jesus went to the cross for, live changed lives, um, walk in the spirit, because he's worth it. Why don't we pray? Heavenly Father, thank you for this night. Thank you that we could talk about such an important topic, the topic that informs everything in our faith. Um, 
I thank you that we could really unpack this message and see the power of it, how it has impacted people, not just in the point in time of, of the cross and Jesus' sacrifice, but it has impacted all of history. And it is so true for us today, um, just as true as it was back then. So I pray that we would cling to this gospel, live in light of it, and share it with others. In your name, amen. Uh, just one final thing I want to tell you guys. Um, we will have Zoom small group tonight. Uh, Pastor Mike sent out the link, and you can also find the small group lesson on our website. So have a good night, guys. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon.